This program is brought to you by Barisok, Kung, Breeders' Choice and the International Fund for Animal Welfare. This program is brought to you by Barisok, the Animal Emergency Centre, McGill Road, Norwood, Adelaide Veterinary Specialist and Referral Centre, The Bird Place, Applied Posture Riding and shebahorseshop.com.au for rugs and saddlery. Welcome to another great show of All About Animals. I'm Olivia. And I'm Jake. On today's show, I hang with some white-handed gibbons. And I catch up with Dino from Bondi Rescue. Awesome! Then we chat to some kids about owning a pet pig. After the show, make sure you check out our Facebook and Twitter pages for cool updates. So sit back and enjoy yet another exciting show. I'm here with Kerry at Gorge Wildlife Park and she's going to show me some of the primates they have here. Wow, they look so cute. What sort of primates are these? These are your white-handed gibbons. Okay. These come from Southeast Asia. Yeah. So they love, imagine the jungle. So we try and stimulate that with the ropes, with your logs and things like that. So they'll go from tree to tree, like I said, quite easily. At the moment we're giving them a variety of just some different fruits. They love fruits, nuts, things like that. Are they smart? Very smart. They are? Most primates are really intelligent. Did you want to? Oh, okay. Just hand, hand, enjoy. Oh. It's just like feeding a human, he just grabs it with his opposable thumb. Normally they let you, sometimes they take it in their mouth. No, it's not going to today. <laughs> So I heard that they're the least man-like primates. Um, well, yes, they are. I mean, obviously, from looking at their characteristics, they have the lot longer arms. Their hands and feet are a lot stronger than ours. Their feet are like a second appendage. So yeah. it's like their hands. Their strength is incredible. Uh, Intelligent-wise, they're a very intelligent primate, but, yeah, a lot different to us. So what is their main diet? Uh, mainly fruit. They love a variety of all different fruits. Um, they don't mind vegetables. We cook them up pumpkin just to balance their diet out a little bit and give them a variety of nuts. And normally about once a week we give them a hard boiled egg. They really enjoy that. Okay. And how long do they live for? Um, normally around about 12 to 15 years, these guys do. Uh, in captivity, sometimes obviously out in the wild, 10 years is quite good. Yeah. With the trees and things being cut down in their native home, obviously that's how they don't live so long. So are they considered an endangered species? Um, well, yeah, they are quite endangered with the growth now that's happening. As I said, with the population, a lot of the trees are getting cut down so they don't have anywhere to live. Um, they'll go high up in the trees. They don't have a lot for a defence mechanism. They do have sharp teeth, but their way of defence mechanism is to get out of there. So they'll swing very fast. They can travel quite fast and they'll get out of the way. So they're more likely to run away rather than fight? Definitely. They're not a fighter like a gorilla or anything like that. They won't stand up. Like I said, they've got the speed with their hands and arms to swing and they will swing away. Thanks for showing me these very cute primates. That's OK. Anytime. I hope you've enjoyed feeding them. Oh, I have. <laughs> to find out more, go to gorgewildlifepark.com.au. Today I'm going to show you some really good cat brushing tips. Brushing is really important so your cat doesn't build up excess fur and cough up fur balls. Work out a set time every day to brush your cat so that you don't forget. Sit down in a comfortable place with your cat so that your brushing time is happy and peaceful for you and your cat. Make sure you're gentle so that you don't cause your cat any pain. Watch your cat's body language. If it seems to be flinching, it could mean that you're pulling its hair, brushing it too hard or might have a sore spot that needs to be checked by a vet. Check the brush often to make sure it isn't clogged with hair. Throw away any hair that you remove from the brush into the bin. Make sure you give your cat a tree after every brush so that it remembers brushing as a happy time. After you finish brushing, your cat will probably want to run off and have some quiet time alone. Don't take this personally, just let your cat be by itself until it's ready for more cuddles. 
Now pigs are very intelligent and curious animals. And apparently they make great pets, so we're going to chat to Courtney to find out more. So Courtney, who is this here? His name's Pumba. And how long do they live for? Um, it depends on what type of pig they are. Yep. I mean, this one lives from about four to five years. So what type of pig is he? Well, he was a miniature pig when we bought him, but he ate too much and he grew bigger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What does your pig do during the day? Well, he runs around a lot and he likes to dig out the roots in the ground. Okay. And does he like rolling in the mud like normal yes. pigs? <laughs> he yep. loves rolling around in the mud. And do you give him a bath once he's rolled around in the mud? Um, sometimes we wet him with a hose just to get all the hay and everything off, but yep. yeah. Courtney, I've heard that pigs are very intelligent. Yes, um, I've heard that they have um, the intelligence of a three-year-old. A three-year-old, okay. Does he like chewing on things? Yes, he loves chewing on stuff like wood and all that stuff, so yeah. What sort of foods would you feed him? Well, we like to feed him some pig pellets and some scraps, and for a treat he likes to eat some apples. <laughs> <laughs> so how much would it cost to purchase a pig? Well, we got this pig for about $900. Mm -hmm. Yep. And do you need to take him to the vet often? Well, when he was little, we, get, we took him to the vet once because we cut out his nose ring and they got all infectious. How many different breeds of pigs are there? Um, there are a lot. There's uh, miniature pigs, there's teacup pigs, and yeah. yeah. <laughs> so teacup means obviously that they're very small? Yes. Yeah. Well, he's just cute. So thanks for chatting to us today about your giant miniature pig. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. After the break, I learn about the plight of the gorgeous orangutans, and later in the show, I take a ride with Bondi Rescue star Dino. I caught up with professional photographer Glenn Alderson, who recently travelled to Borneo to photograph the orangutans, who are at risk of becoming endangered due to palm oil production. He talks about the amazing trip he had. So what are orangutans like? Orangutans are an amazing animal. They, if, if you look at their facial expressions, they're, they're just like us. Uh, their personalities, just the way they act. I mean, you, you, you can't look at another animal that can be closer associated to us. So did you take all these lovely photos yourself? Yes, I took all these photos back in April in uh, Kalimantan in Borneo. And we're selling all these photos with 100% of the money going towards uh, the orangutans. And what did you see on your trip? I spent some time at a rehabilitation centre at Central Kalimantan in Borneo. Uh, there we saw um, a lot of um, orphaned orangutans who have lost their mums due to deforestation. Uh, I also went out into a rainforest looking for wild orangutans and spent some time there. Also went into a palm oil plantation where I could see the effects of what's happening to the orangutans firsthand. So why is the use of palm oil really bad? The reason palm oil is bad is because palm oil is in the majority of the products that we use, from the food that we eat to cosmetics to cleaning products. Now, to grow palm oil, they have to pull down a huge amount of forests in Borneo, and this is basically wiping out the orangutans. And what can we use instead of palm oil? We can use peanut oil, we can use canola oil, we can use olive oil. There's a lot of other alternatives that can be used. They're just probably a little bit more expensive than what palm oil is. So what can the general public do to help the orangutans? General awareness. Let all your friends and family know about what's happening to the orangutans in Borneo. And when you do your shopping and you're looking for food and you're looking at cosmetics and cleaning products, have a look on the labels on the back of the products and see if you can see um, palm oil on the back of the label. Sometimes it doesn't say palm oil, it might say vegetable oil. So you can have a look at any of our websites and they will give you a list of what products to look out for. Well that sounds amazing, Glenn, and good luck with the rest of your mission to help the orangutans. Thank you. To find out more about how you can help the orangutans, go to glennalderson.com. Today Claire's going to show us the different body parts of a horse. Okay, Olivia, so these are some of the basic parts of the horse. We have the pole, which is the bony bit on between his ears. We have the crest, which is the very top of his neck. We have his withers, which is the highest point of his spine. We have his back. And we have his croup, which is the highest point of the rump. This is his rump here, which is the most powerful part of the horse. 
We have his flank, which is a very ticklish part of the horse, so when you're grooming, you've got to be careful of that. We have his hock, which is the very elbowy looking thing on his back leg. And some of the parts that some of the kids get confused with is this hair at the front is called the forelock. And down here on his front legs, which looks a bit like an ankle, this is called a fetlock. So that's some of the parts of the horse. Oh, and I noticed some numbers on his shoulder. What are they? Well, the bottom number, which is a six, represents the year that he was born in. And the top number represents what number foal he was born in that year. So he was the number six foal at that stud. Thanks, Claire. That's really interesting. Thanks for your time today. You're welcome. For more information about riding lessons, go to fouroaxfarm.com.au. So, Jake, who sent in today's joke? I believe I was the one who sent in this joke. Are you ready for it? Okay. Okay, what do you give a sick ant? What do you give a sick ant? I don't you give know. it antibiotics. Ah -ha! Not funny. Are you serious? Yeah. I worked hard on that <laughs> joke. Oh my gosh. It's not funny. <laughs> not funny. See if you can make Olivia laugh. Send your animal jokes to info at allaboutanimals.tv. Now today's native Australian animal is the emu. It's the largest bird in Australia and after the ostrich, it's the second largest bird in the world. So I decided to take a trip to Gorge Wildlife Park to find out more about this unique Australian bird. So do they ever start running like around the shed or anything? Yes, yeah, it's like they're getting shy from around the corner because they were going to come and now they've nicked off. So, so Kerry, how fast can the emus run? Um, around about 45, 50 kilometres. <laughs> <laughs> they normally run around in a big group, like a big play. Come on. So I see that one's drinking water. Do they go back up just so they can get it down their throat? Scoop it down, yep. Oh, so and it's then go like straight a, down their so throat. It's like a scoop, yeah. So can emus fly? No, they're a land bird. As you can see, it there is no sort of wingspan no. there. So that's why they're such good runners. They are a land bird. The type of species in general that they are is called a rat eye. Which a is rat the same. Eye. Yeah. yeah. So you've got your ostrich, your cassowary, your emus. They're all part of that same family. And the bit on their neck, sort of behind their eye, oh. why is that to like got you no. Know, That's actually where their ears are. See just behind there? Yeah. Yeah. On that part of their head where it is, no, where there's no feathers. So what's he doing there? He's just having a seat, <laughs> having a sit down and rest, probably after running. So as you can see with the elbow and their legs, and then their legs sit forward. Yeah, so they're just kind of like that. Yeah, and he's having a little rest. Because that one over there is light coloured, does that mean it's a female compared to these ones? No, not necessarily. Their colours don't change from male to female. Okay. That one's just always been lighter ever since it was a young chick. Okay. What sort of foods do they eat? Um, well, here in captivity, we give them a blend of pellets, bread and some loosen. Yep. And at the moment, we're just giving them a treat of um, apples because they love that diced up. Yep. But out in the wild, it's mainly um, the different oh, grasses grass. they eat. Yeah. And yep. every now and then, they'll pick up the odd bug worm, things okay. like that. Do they use their necks to stretch out for anything else? No, mainly just when they're getting aggressive. Just, just to let them know. Back off. Yeah, back, back off, off, stay away, I'm getting fed up. So they extend their neck right up. And then if it doesn't work and the predator keeps coming or another emu, that's when they'll kick out. Okay. So when the emus are sitting on the ground, do they crawl sometimes? Um, only a very small amount, but not normally. Their legs are really quite delicate, so once they sort of get down there, that's where they stay. Up okay. and down is a bit of effort. So I heard that the emus can travel quite a long distance in a day, so why do they travel so far? Well, normally to find food. That's their main objective, to find some different grass, different bugs, things like that, different grubs. Um, they'll go through anything. They'll go through fences to get to food. They'll get through, I mean, they'll go over fences through them. They are a really big pest for farmers. Well, thanks, Kerry. I learnt a lot about these Australian birds. That's OK. Any time you'd like to come past and have a look, feel free. <laughs> to find out more, go to gorgewildlifepark.com.au. Stay with us, because after the break, I get up close to a massive St Bernard dog, and then Olivia gets saved by Bondi Rescue lifeguard, Dino. In an earlier show, I showed you some of the orphan possums I am hand raising. Well, today I'm going to chat to another fauna rescue member who looks after kangaroos. So, Danny, how old are they? Uh, Nola's four and a half months old, and Chester here is about five and a half months old, and although they're the same weight, he's yeah, older because he's come from a bit of a horrible background. So, why are they orphaned? 
Well, Nella's mum was hit by a car um, and he was thrown from the pouch and luckily enough the, the man that hit his mum stopped and checked and seen him lying on the road and Chester's mum was shot by illegal hunters and um, they tried to keep him as a pet and didn't know what to do with him and he got very, very sick. It was just lucky that they brought us to him in time, but he was hard work. So what made you start looking after kangaroos? Well, I first got into wildlife care when I was about 14. We found a, a baby possum. Somebody had killed its mum, so we raised him up and then I got involved with Fauna Rescue and moved out here and fell in love with kangaroos. They're my passion now. <laughs> Can't say no. And what's the youngest joy you've ever looked after? Well, the smallest one I've had was 500 grams, mm. and he was very, very hard work. Mm. Um, three hourly feeds, so he mm. didn't get much sleep. And how big can kangaroos grow? Um, well, the biggest I've seen has been around about 80 kilos, <laughs> but uh, with a lot of illegal shooting and stuff like that, they don't really get that big in the wild anymore, but the ones in our yard would be around about 60 kilos. <laughs> So Danny, what will we be feeding them just then? Uh, we're feeding them a specially made formula that caters to basically all animals' needs, but um, kangaroos are lactose intolerant, so you can't feed them cow's milk, so this formula replicates the mother's milk as best as it can to try and give them all the fats and proteins that they need. And what happens to them after they're grown and healthy? Um, well, these guys, once they're a bit bigger, will go into um, our yard that we have. So ours will go in and be looked after for the rest of their life and eat lots of trees and <laughs> stuff like that. And what's the most common reason for them to be orphaned? Uh, the most common would have to be probably vehicle accidents. Either they've been hit by a car or been scared and they've dropped their joey. Um, probably the second most common would be illegal shooting. And did you have to do any special training to look after kangaroos? Um, well, within Fauna Rescue, you do the, the kangaroo workshop and also if you are too far out from the city, you get buddied up with an experienced carer. But um, you can't have kangaroos unless you've had a little bit of training in regards to kangaroos. Well, Danny, you're doing such an amazing job looking after these kangaroos. And thanks for your time today. Thanks for coming out and meeting them. To find out more, go to faunarescue.org.au. So Danielle, I know that St. Bernard's are big dogs, but how big can they grow? Uh, they start at 90 kilos and work their way up. Okay. This guy is 90 kilos and he's a small boy. Um, but usually the maximum 160 kilos. 160? Because he's like... a big he's a big boy, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a big boy. What's his name? Uh, this is Henry. So that's Henry? And um, how long will he live for? The lifespan says they live to be about 10 to 13. Yep. But here in Australia, they tend to go about eight to nine okay. because of the heat. When the heat gets about 38 degrees, they need to be brought inside and kept cool. Yep. This guy in the summer is kept inside with the aircon in constantly. He has his own aircon room. Oh. So he's actually quite spoilt because he just can't cope with it. And how old is he? Uh, he's two and a half. So he's not fully grown yet, but he's almost there. Yeah. And how much would a St. Bernard cost? Um, usually between two and four grand. Yeah, OK. Depending on their markings and show quality. So um, do they develop any problems later in life? They are prone to hip problems because they're so heavy. Yep. Yeah, that's pretty much the main one, which is why you have to get them tested. Yep. You have three kids. Yes. So um, is he good with them? He's fantastic. These yep. are probably one of the most gentle giants I have ever come across. Yep. I have a two and a half year old, a one and a half year old, as well as a 10 month old, and I can leave them in the room with him and know that he won't knock them over. They ride him. <laughs> they, they can pull his tail. They can pretty much do whatever they want to him and he just lays there and takes it all. They are just brilliant family dogs. Well, thanks, Danielle, for sharing the same banal with me. <laughs> That's fine. This week's celebrity pet owner is Dino from Monday Rescue. So come on, let's go find him. Hi Dino. Hi Olivia. 
I know Rest here looks like an amazing show. Do you have fun making it? Yeah, we've got an awesome playground that we work in and we get some great waves and we get to meet lots of people and <laughs> we have a good time making Bondi Rescue, yeah. And how long have you been a lifeguard? This is my 11th year as a lifeguard, <laughs> which has gone really quickly. It's been great fun. So what made you decide to become a lifeguard? I guess I grew up playing around the ocean, swimming and surfing and looked up to the lifeguards when I was a little boy. So it just felt natural that I would want to grow up and be a lifeguard and get to help people. And who is this with you today? This is my best mate Jaffa. And what breed is Jaffa? Jaffa's a mini groodle. And uh, has he ever come to work with you? He has once or twice. He was sick one day and I was really quiet so I brought him into work. <laughs> my boss wasn't too happy but um, I think he liked him in the end. <laughs> And how old is Jaffa? Jaffa's two. He's, um, he still acts like a puppy though. He's still very excited to see people and <laughs> always wants to play. And does Jaffa like the water? Jaffa loves the water. He doesn't like having a bath, but he <laughs> loves to go swimming and running around in the sand. He, I think he would love to run down there and chase the birds. <laughs> does Jaffa know any tricks? Jaffa's not really good with the tricks. He sits. Um, He's very cute in the morning. He jumps in bed with my wife and goes to sleep. <laughs> and he knows how to get food off people, but uh, that's about it for Jaffa. Do you have any other pets at home? No, no, Jaffa's our only pet. Um, we actually want to get some goldfish for the lifeguard tower <laughs> as, as more pets, but uh, Jaffa's it at the moment. Well, thanks, Dino, for showing me Jaffa. Can we go and have a look at what you do now? Yeah, my pleasure. Let's check out the beach. Right, now one of my favourite segments, the viewer pets. I'd like to thank everyone for sending in the photos of their pets. I love looking through them all and I'll send you three of my favourites to show you right now. Here we have Abby from St Helens in Tasmania with her rat, Tibbles. She says Tibbles is a very cute rat who loves to eat cheese. Whenever she's given food, she stashes it away in a secret place for later. She lets Tibbles run around the house because she loves to get into lots of mischief. She also says Tibbles is very clever, so she lets her run around the house because she doesn't run away. And as you've probably guessed by now, Tibbles has a great personality and is very cheeky. This is Rory and her very cute dog called Snoopy. Snoopy is a mixed breed. He's part Cavalier, part Bichon and part Schnauzer. He loves playing with bubbles and bouncing on the trampoline. Snoopy is a very friendly dog and also loves playing with other dogs. Sometimes he runs out of the front of the house and Rory has to chase him. Snoopy likes the water so much that after being at the beach all day, when he comes home, he jumps straight into the bath. This is Sienna, age two from Vaucluse, New South Wales, with her lovable dog called Rocky. Rocky is a three-year-old chocolate Labrador who is completely crazy. Rocky loves to cuddle up to a doorstop that looks just like a tiger. She also loves playing with sticks and is often seen carrying around a log that is way too big for her. Sienna loves playing with Rocky and spends lots of time with her at the beach as they both love water. Great photos guys, you can have your pets on our show too. All you have to do is email three photos of you and your pet plus five interesting facts to info allaboutanimals.tv and make sure you go to our website to enter our great competitions and maybe win some amazing prizes for your pet. Don't miss our next show because Jay gets really close to a beautiful dugong at Sydney Aquarium and I pop into Nova Radio Station in Sydney to catch up with the very funny Fitzy. We hope you enjoyed watching another great show of All About Animals. Make sure you follow us on Facebook and Twitter so you can get updated with what we're doing. Oh, and remember to check out the great competitions on our website. And thanks for watching All About Animals. See you next time.
This program was also brought to you by Bet's Kids, Westfield Marion, Esprit Kids, Pumpkin Patch, JR's Surf and Ski, Breeders' Choice, JJ's and Bonnet Saddle World.